So Lindsay, off the bat, just start off, you're still involved in the front office with the Coyotes. What exactly is your role with them? Yeah, so I still have my, uh, I call it my, my day job and my night job. So my day job is director of external engagements and female hockey. Um, so basically running all of our, our girls hockey programming or kind of overseeing it. And then uh, external engagements is really, I think that ambassador piece, like getting out in the community, whether that's with um, season ticket members, partners, uh, just community partners, and really getting them excited about hockey and people who aren't partners with us yet, um, showing them why they should be excited about hockey. I mean, this sport teaches so many amazing things and pulls so many amazing people together. So we want to get people fired up about that. So uh, that's, that's the day job. Now your role, you do have a new role. Like you said, your night job. Uh, Coyotes radio analyst, how did this opportunity come about? Yeah, um, to very unexpected opportunity. Uh, our, our former radio color analyst, Paul Bissonnette, um, is a very busy man. He's got a lot of stuff going on in the media world. He's traveling a lot. Um, so I think he, he kind of wanted to step away from it, um, wanted to focus more on the TV side. So this spot opened up um, over the summer. And as they were kind of evaluating potential candidates, um, our, our, our CEO, our director of, uh, or our VP of broadcasting and communications basically came up and said, Hey, is this something you'd be interested in? And it just, I don't want to say it blindsided me because I was very excited about it, but I just was like, huh, I've never even considered doing something like this before. Um, but I think, you know, I, I've, I've done some podcasting stuff in the, in the past and I think that's really fun. And then, um, you know, I've, I've done a lot of media training just throughout my career as a hockey player in college. And then for the Olympics, it was even more. So I think it was just one of those where I was like, Hey, you know what, why not? It's unique. It's different. It'll probably be fun. And I feel confident um, being able to be on a mic and talking about the thing that I know better than anything else in the world. So um, yeah, I went for it and it's been great, but I didn't think I would enjoy it as much as I am. And I think, um, you know, for one, Bob Heathouse, Heater, my my play-by-play -play partner is like the sweetest man in the entire world. He's been doing this forever. Um, so he's just been such an amazing partner, mentor, uh, coach throughout this entire process. And um, so, so respectful of me. I mean, to be able to come in and have somebody who's been doing this for, you know, decades be like you're the expert I'm leaning on you to bring life to everything I'm saying is like such a great starting point um and it, it just made me feel really valued from the beginning I think what's really cool for me because I've been away from the game as a as a player for five six years now um to kind of realize how much you've actually learned and developed throughout your hockey career and to be able to like just pull things out from your past that you didn't even know were still in there um, and talk about them has been, it's been really cool. We always do the, what's the hardest part of being a female in sports? And I'm over that question. So really, <laughs> what's the best part of being a female in sports? I mean, I think for me, it's just being a role model. Um, you know, I think one of the hardest things about stepping away as a player was just not really knowing um, I always wondered, you know, am I stepping away too soon? Have I built enough of a following or resume or whatever to go and make the impact that I want to make? And I was so happy to find out that the answer is no. I mean, I can make, I can make the impact players who, you know, women who played any level of college hockey can make an impact on, on the youth side of things, getting kids excited about the game. Um, but I think the coolest part of working in sports business is now it's like there, the number of women that go on to play on the Olympic team is so minuscule. The number of women who want to go on and work in professional sports is massive. Mm -hmm. And so I think to be a, a role model, model, a mentor, um, hopefully, you know, continue to, to shatter some of these glass ceilings, all that good stuff. Um, I think it's been really cool to be able to do that as a woman in sports business. And I think hopefully it uh, inspire and, and now on the media side too, in the broadcasting space, um, 
hopefully that just inspires more girls and women to, to know that they can do it too. So what is Skating for Layton? Yeah, so Skating for Layton is uh, basically a honorary event for Layton Accardo, who was a nine-year-old girl, um, hockey player, baseball player, just super athlete, uh, who unfortunately passed away due to cancer uh, in November phenomenal kid um she was totally adopted as a as a coyotes player um for the year which was amazing and she just meant a lot to those of us who coached her those of us who knew her um she just she just was this amazing amazing young girl who battled something so horribly or so horrible and just always did it with a smile on her face um which is a lot for a nine-year-old so when she passed away, we wanted to do something special. I had already kind of been thinking of this like crazy skating event to just like, I think get people excited about the coyotes and the season starting up again. And when she passed, it was so easy to just like, nope, we're transitioning this whole thing to be about her. So skating for Layton is, uh, it's a 96 mile rollerblade that I will be doing, uh, kind of in this like lone, journey by myself starting at phoenix children's hospital i'm going to stop briefly at every single ice rink in the valley and then i'll end at gila river arena um it's going to be a long day probably going to take me like 12 hours um and the whole idea is to raise awareness you know for one who Leighton was but also um for the Leighton Amor Leighton Accardo memorial scholarship fund that we started up in honor of Leighton, and that's going to be used to help young girls like Leighton um, play hockey and uh, just you know continue her legacy forever so uh, it's it's going to be a, a wild time <laughs> I'm a, I don't know what to expect I've been training for it but I feel like it's one of those that you just you don't know how it's going to go till you get out there and uh, we actually had to push it due to a rain delay um, so now it's going to be on February 21st so people can come out um, stop at the rinks we'll be tweeting about it to kind of know where I'm at during the day and uh, yeah, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a fun day.